The next thing to talk about is how we interpret our confidence intervals. So once we've constructed them, what does that mean? What does that tell us? And what can we? What kind of questions can we answer? So we've already been talking about this one data set, um, whether or not people approve of the way Barack Obama is doing his job as president. So referring back to that information we've already constructed, can we conclude that less than the majority of Americans approve of Barack Obama? So here's what we've established so far. The 95% confidence interval estimate for the proportion of people who approve of Barack Obama as president is 0 0.3993 to 0 0.4607. So to interpret that, and in this case specifically answer the question that we're being presented with, can we conclude that less than the majority of Americans approve Bar of Barack Obama? Um, in this case, we're looking for less than the majority. So majority would mean more than 50%. So 50% isn't quite enough for the majority. We would need more than 50% of Americans. So less than the majority would mean 50% or less. So what we're looking for in this case is our values equal or less than 50% represent in our confidence interval. So in this case, since our interval contains values equal, equal to or less than 0 0.5, we can say that less than the majority of people approve of Barack Obama as president. So a different scenario would be if our interval contained values that were all greater than 50%, then we'd be able to say that the majority approve. Let's take another look at another example. In example four, the 2012 Summer Olympic Games, 85 countries competed. Of the countries that competed, 51 at least won gold medal. So in part A, we're asked, can we say that the majority of countries who competed in the 2012 Summer Olympic Games won at least one gold medal? So in this case, yes, we can say that because we have population data for the problem that we're considering. If we're asking specifically just about the 2012 Summer Olympic Games, we have all of the results presented in this problem. So we don't need any statistical inference. All we, we just need to say that yes, because we have population data. And 50 out of 85 is approximately 0 0.5882. I don't know why I just typed that twice. Is about 50.882, or about a, a, just a little under 60%. So, which is more than 50%, so we have the majority of countries winning gold medals. So this is one of those examples to look out for where we don't need any statistical inference. We have the population data. We have all the data for the population that we're interested in studying. So all we need to do is just interpret those results that we have. But now in part B, we want to take that information and see, can we say that the majority of countries who compete in the Summer Olympics, so not just in 2012, but in the Summer Olympic Games in general, will win at least one gold medal. So now we need to apply some statistical inference. The first thing we need to do is verify the conditions. So we can say that since 50 countries won at least one gold medal, we have 10 or more successes. Since 85 minus those 50 who won one gold medal equals 35 countries did not win at least one gold medal, we have 10 or more successes, or I'm sorry, 10 or more failures. Thus, the conditions are met to estimate the population proportion. So we can switch over to StatCrunch.
which I already had open here, and go back to that edit screen, update our number of successes, our number of observations, and our confidence interval. So in this case, we had 50 successes out of 88 to, or 85 total observations, and we want a confidence interval of 90%, so 0 0.9. That gives us a confidence interval of 0 0.5, give or take a little, up to 0 0.676. So we can say the 90% confidence interval estimate for the proportion of countries who will win at least one gold medal in the Summer Olympics is 0 0.5004 to 0 0.6760. So what we're saying is, can we say that the majority of countries who compete will win at least one gold medal? So in this case, all of the values in our confidence interval are greater than 50%. Even though 0 0.5004 is only slightly larger, it is still larger than 50%. Since all values in our confidence interval are greater than 50%, we can say that Yes, the majority of countries who compete will win at least one gold medal. So again, it's comparing that idea of the majority to our confidence interval. In this case, all of those values are larger than 50%. So our range of likely values for that true population proportion is larger than 50%, so we can say that, yes, it is the majority. In example five, a survey asked people their opinion about whether or not Dr. Martin Luther King's dream of racial equality had been realized. So we have the information on how many people were surveyed, the percent that responded, and we want to use a 95% confidence interval estimate to see if we can conclude that the majority of Americans believe his dream has been realized. So we need to start by verifying the conditions. We have a sample size of 1,310 times the sample proportion, which is approximately 668. So it comes out to be a decimal number, but we just go ahead and round that because we can't have half of a person responding one way. So we have our sample size times our sample proportion, gives us approximately 668 people, which is larger than 10. We have 1,310 times 1 minus 0 0.51, which is approximately 642 which is larger than 10. So we have a large enough sample to generate 10 successes and 10 failures. So the conditions are met. We can go ahead and apply this process of constructing a confidence interval. So coming back to StatCrunch, <clears throat> we can update our number of successes. In this case, we had 668 successes approximately, again rounding that to the nearest whole number, out of our 1,310 observations, and we want a 95% confidence interval. Click Compute, and again we get that range of values for our confidence interval, the lower and upper limit, and we can say the 95% confidence interval estimate for the proportion of people who believe Dr. King's dream has been realized is 0 0.4829 to 0 0.5370. So again, what we're being asked is, can we conclude that the majority of Americans believe his dream has been realized? So in this case, our confidence interval does have values that are larger than 50%, but it also contains values that are less than 50%.
and we have to consider any value in that range to be a likely candidate for the population proportion. So since our confidence interval contains values that are equal to or less than 50% or 0 0.5, no, we cannot conclude that the majority of Americans believe his dream has been realized. Again, it's coming down to finding some particular value, determining whether that's in our confidence interval or not, and providing an interpretation based off that. In this case, it could be that 53% of Americans feel his dream has been realized, or it could be about 49%, which would be a little bit less than the majority. So since there's a potential for it to be more than the majority or less than the majority, or exactly equal to 50%, we don't have enough information to say that it is definitely larger than the majority. In our last example, according to the United States Life Saving Association, the chance that a person will drown by attending a beach they protect is 1 in 18 million. In 2011, it's estimated there were 20 people who drowned at beaches that were guarded by these guards, lifeguards. Given that a little over 312 million people visited the beach in 2011, does this data support the USLA's claim? We want to use a 99% confidence level. So for our sample data, in 2011, it's estimated that 20 people drowned. So we have at least 10 successes. Now this is one of those cases where success does not necessarily mean a good thing. In this case, the success is a bad thing. It's just the thing that we're interested in studying, in this case, the probability of drowning. So we have 20 people who drowned, so we have at least 10 successes. That means there were 312,747,117 people who did not drown. So we have at least 10 failures. Since the conditions are met, we can go ahead and continue with this process for uh, constructing our confidence interval. So flipping back over to StatCrunch, we can update our number of successes to be the 20 people who drowned out of the 312,747,137 people who um, swam at a beach that was protected by these guards. We want a 99% confidence level, so we click compute. And again, we get this lower and upper limit, limit. but what's important to notice here is at the end of each of these numbers, we have this e to the negative 8, e to the negative 7. So that's basically StatCrunch's way of representing scientific notation. So it means 10 to the negative 8th, 10 to the negative 7th. So we can say that the 99% confidence interval estimate for the pr proportion of people who drown on USLA guarded beaches is 0 0.1234567 sorry I've got to count that out 1 4 to 0 0.1234567 so hopefully I got the right number of zeros in there um, so that's our 99% confidence interval estimate. So their claim is that 0 0.12377, 0 0.0000055, so this percentage converted into a decimal. That's their claim. So it should be a 1 in 18 million chance. So their claim is that the actual proportion is this value. Since that number is included in our interval, then yes, this data supports their claim.